There are lots of ways to plot data, of course, and the best type of plot is often suggested by the nature of the data and by how the plot will be used. For example, this input shows data consisting of a list of points in two dimensions. A common way to display this type of data is with a line plot produced here using the list line plot function. The list line plot function can handle more than one data set. For example, this input introduces a second data set and list line plot gives a plot with both data sets on the same plot. It's also common to plot this type of data using points rather than lines. For example, this shows a plot of the same data, this time using the list plot function rather than list line plot. List plot shows the data using plot markers for each point. This type of plot is sometimes called a scatter plot. It's also possible to show the lines and plot markers on the same plot. This uses the list line plot function again, but with the plot markers option set to automatic so that the plot includes a marker at each point and lines connecting the points. For other types of data, another common type of plot is a bar chart. This shows a simple bar chart produced by the bar chart function. Here's another more elaborate bar chart, still using the bar chart function, but this time with several option settings. In this example, the bar origin left option causes the bars to extend from the left side of the chart rather than up from the bottom. The chart layout stacked option causes the bars from each of the five data sets to be shown stacked end to end rather than displayed side by side. The joined true option adds the guidelines between each stack of bars. The chart legends option adds the legend. The chart labels option specifies labels for each stack of bars and the bar spacing option controls the space between the bars. One of many variations of a basic bar chart is this chart generated by the paired bar chart function which can be useful for comparing two sets of numbers. This shows a different type of chart called a pie chart, which is a common alternative to a simple bar chart. For data in more than two dimensions, there are even more alternatives. This shows a chart called a bubble chart generated by the bubble chart function. The data in this example is a list of elements and each element is a list of three numbers. So this is effectively three dimensional data. In the bubble chart, the first two dimensions give the location of each bubble and the third dimension is shown by the size of the bubble at that location. This chart also shows three groups of bubbles with different colors. The color is effectively a way of displaying a fourth variable in a bubble chart. This shows another way of displaying that same data. This input uses the list point plot 3D function with option settings so that the third dimension is shown as the height of each line in the 3D plot. Here is another more specialized plot for yet another very different type of data. Here the data give a two-dimensional vector at each point in a two-dimensional array for a total of four dimensions. The plot is created using the list stream plot function, which draws arrows along streamlines of the vectors in the data. Here is one last example for yet another much, much different type of data. This input uses the candlestick chart function to create a chart called a candlestick chart, which is used for displaying financial trading information. That plot is a good example of a chart where in addition to the basic structure of the plot, there are lots of important details involving choices of colors and shapes and lines and other marks and how things are labeled and so on, all of which have specific meanings. There are many applications where those de details have spe specific meanings that depend on the application. In the Wolfram language, many of those details are controlled using options. To illustrate some common things that are done using options, this input shows a line plot without any additional options, and this shows the same data with various option settings of the enclosing list line plot function. In this example, the frame true option adds a frame around the plot. The grid lines option specifies the horizontal and vertical lines in the plot. The plot legends option adds the legend. The frame label option specifies the labels around the outside of the frame. The plot style option specifies styles for the lines in the plot and the Label style option gives the font size to use for labels. Small changes of options can have a large effect on the appearance of a plot. For example, here is another plot of the same data using many of the same options, but this plot includes the filling option to add shading between the lines, which can be useful for emphasizing differences between two data sets. One important option is the plot range option, which controls the ranges of coordinates to use in a plot. Usually those ranges are chosen automatically. For example, the horizontal and vertical ranges in this plot were chosen automatically. 
There are a few common situations, though, where it can be useful to specify some other plot range. One situation comes up when separate plots are being compared. For example, this input shows three separate data sets on three separate plots, but since the automatic system chooses a different vertical scale for each plot, it's difficult to immediately compare the plots. Setting the plot range option to the same value for all of the plots, as in this input, causes all of the plots to use the same scale so that the plots can be more easily compared. Another common situation where it can be useful to specify a non-default plot range is when the automatically chosen range excludes outliers. For example, the automatically chosen range in this plot excludes a point that is well outside of the range of the other points in the data. The automatic system chooses a range that best shows the variability in most of the data, which is appropriate most of the time, but this approach can sometimes exclude outliers. This can be changed by including the plot range all option, which shows all of the points, including outliers. This can be useful in applications where it's important to see outliers, even if that means making it harder to see the variability in the rest of the data. A related issue is the scale used in the plot. Most plots use linear scales. Probably the most common nonlinear scale is a logarithmic scale. This input uses the list log plot function, which plots the data on a logarithmic vertical scale. A logarithmic scale or any other scale can be specified using the scaling functions option. For example, instead of using list log plot, the same plot with a logarithmic vertical scale can be obtained using list plot with the scaling function functions option set to log 10. The scaling functions option can do any scaling. For example, this shows an application of the scaling functions option to reverse both the horizontal and vertical scales of the plot so that the horizontal scale increases to the left and the vertical scale increases down rather than up, which is a more natural way of displaying certain types of data. An important detail in almost all plots is labeling. Plots have a minimal set of labels by default, like the labels on the tick marks. For example, here is a bar chart which by default has labels on the vertical axis. In a bar chart, the independent variable is typically a categorical variable, and the values of that variable can be included in the bar chart using the chart labels option. Another way of adding labels is with the labeled function, as in this example. That input also shows one sometimes convenient way of including the values of the independent variable right in the data. In the Wolfram language, though, another way of representing this data, which also includes the values of the categorical variable right in the data, is by giving the data as an association rather than as a list. For example, this shows that same data entered as an association. An association is a collection of keys and values. In this example, the keys in the association are the values of the independent variable. In bar chart, the keys are used automatically as labels for the bars. The default bar chart includes another type of label called a tooltip, which is a label that appears when the mouse is positioned over each bar. These labels show the value associated with each bar, but the tooltip label can display anything. This shows another type of chart called a box and whisker chart, which is used in statistics to display location and variation in data. The tooltip for this chart shows a small table giving the maximum, minimum, median, and upper and lower quartiles of the data. Tooltip labels can be added to other plots using the tooltip function. For example, this shows the tooltip function used to add tooltip labels for a selected points in a line plot. The tooltip function acts as a wrapper. The first argument in tooltip gives the numerical value to use for the purpose of making the plot, and the second argument specifies what to show in the label. One other type of label is a callout label, which is specified using the callout function. This shows that same plot with callout labels. A callout label displays with a short line between the label and the labeled point in the plot. Different types of labels can also be combined. Here's a plot, for example, with callout labels for two specific points, separate callout labels that label each of the lines, and a tooltip label for each point. The tooltip labels are added here by mapping the tooltip function over the data. Labels on the tick marks in a plot can be sim can similarly be almost anything. For example, this shows non-default labels added to a plot using the ticks option. A common special case of labeling is shown by this example, which uses the date list plot function. Date list plot is designed for making plots where the horizontal axis represents time or calendar dates. 
the first element for each point in this data is in a format that is recognized by date list plot as a date specification. Date list plot is commonly used in plotting time series data, such as the data returned by this input. The result here is a time series expression, which is a special data structure that's used in the Wolfram language representing time series. Mathematically, a time series is a list of values indexed by time. The normal function can be used to see that time series expression as a list of values and times. The date list plot function can handle any of these formats. For example, this shows date list plot plotting the data in the original time series expression. The tick mark labels on the horizontal axis are taken from the times in the time series expression. In the Wolfram documentation, a good place to start to find more information about basic functions for making plots of data is this guide page on data visualization.